Hello, everyone, and welcome to Collider Mailbag. This is the weekend show where we take your viewers' submitted questions. How do you do that? You send an email to collidervideo at gmail.com, and we'll answer them here on this weekend show or during the week on Movie Talk. I'm joined today by... Hey, guys. Sinead back here again. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. And also... Hello, it's Mark Riley. Happy to be here with you guys on this fine mailbag. Yes. Sunday edition, Sunday edition. edition of mailbag. Always good on a Sunday. So what's the first question? Tis but a scratch, right? Hey, sweaties. Great sweaty from Germany. Love your shows. Addicted to your videos. Do you think we will ever see some adaptations of the crazier 80s cartoons like Biker Mice from Mars, Saber Riders, Silver Hawks, or even the clean freak Captain Planet? Thanks for all the great time streaming. Keep up the sweaty epicness. I mean, it's always possible. Uh, the only problem I think is some of those have lesser name recognition than, than a lot of the other properties that we've seen. Yeah. Like a Transformer, a G.I. Joe, a Voltron. The only two from here that I could see is maybe Captain Planet was pretty big. Yeah. Uh, Silverhawks was s- semi-known, but it was more of a Thundercats ripoff, and, and Thundercats hasn't come out. They haven't made a movie of that yet. Biker Mice from Mars and Saber Rider, I, I think they just may be just too, I don't know, unknown to yeah. the general population. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, well, I, I was just looking up because I thought there was a Captain Planet, uh, a Captain Planet movie was actually announced in development. So, so I kind of looked at this question and was like, yeah, you know, sooner or later, I feel like they might run out of cartoons to adapt and they might go back to some of these. Maybe even Captain Planet, if it does get off the ground, will be something that will be the litmus test to see if these things work. And then they might go into Silverhawks. I agree, I can see. Haven't heard of the other ones, so I'm not sure. And Captain Planet, was that really an 80s cartoon? I thought that might have been a 90s, if if I'm not mistaken. Early 90s, maybe late 80s, but it's definitely more well-known. Sinead, have you even heard of any of these (laughs) cartoons? Were you alive? I don't even think you were alive (laughs) when these Um, came out. God, I'm old. Sadly, have not heard of one of these titles. Um, I'm really young, you guys. Yeah. Sorry. No, oh, not even Captain Planet. Captain Planet, the, <laughs> the, the, the blue-skinned weirdo with the green hair. I think it was the '80s, but you're right. I, I'm trying to look. In 2013, they announced uh, a Captain Planet movie in development. So that's the last we've heard. In 2013. 2013. Ooh, okay. So that's so that's not looking so hot. Not really. looking hot for a Captain Planet movie although i don't think i'd ever watch a captain i is mean it, i have he, no they idea said how they he, could um, do it a, a clean freak what does that mean he's an environmentalist he like oh. helps like it's like him and like this group of kids they have i don't know they have rings or something like that and he <laughs> yeah. helps them like save the forest and oh i save, love it you know save the whales and save all those things there was a funny funny or die sketch with don Cheadle that played captain yeah. planet and it was funny because at first it came out just like the cartoons and he was saving the earth and then he just started turning everything into a tree. Like, it's like, you're a tree. That's a tree. You. That's right. So I thought that was pretty funny. But I, yeah. as far as a movie's concerned, I just don't know what potential is there. Well, obviously, three years ago, they were like, this is a great idea. And then somebody was fired, and it's not happening anymore. Yeah. I don't know. No, no word. All right. What's the second mailbag? Joshua Canovis writes, Hey, Collider, at your boy Josh from Miami here. Have you ever dragged your family or friends to a movie suggesting they will like it from what you saw in the trailer and then you are all let down and you end up feeling embarrassed? I suggested Open Water to my family and I lost their trust in movies for a while. And I also, I suggested, and also I suggested Catwoman when my sister was suggesting White Chicks. Sad face. Riley, uh, any experiences in this department? Oh, yeah, and I still (laughs) don't live this down. I was convinced that the Godzilla movie that came out in 2000 or sorry 1998 yeah the Roland Emmerich one was going to be the next big thing they got me the hype the trailers I was like oh this is gonna be rad and I made all my friends go I'm like we're doing this opening night we all go worst movie they still I still have my friend Chris Nelson little shout out every time I see him he's just like remember when you took us to Godzilla (laughs) you're an asshole I mean, they, they hated that movie. I hated that movie, and I was embarrassed afterwards. So that's my big one. Yeah. Sinead, any uh, movies you've taken your family to or friends to that they uh, now still ridicule you for? Um, <laughs> well, my very first memory was when 
Stuart Little came out. Now, obviously, I was a kid, and I was so excited because there was nothing cooler than a talking mouse. So I took my mom and my dad to the movie theater, made them take me, and my mom fell asleep, and she snored. And I remember <laughs> wanting to die. I was so embarrassed. I was, like, in tears all, all the way home, like, why would you do that to me? I was so upset. And she was like, that movie was awful. It was horrible. <laughs> um, luckily, you guys saved my butt a lot because... I listen to you guys, and then those are the movies I suggest to my parents, and I'm pretty much like the go-to in my family, which makes me feel really cool, um, but I did suggest San Andreas, just because I thought, it, regardless, it was still going to be like fun and cheesy, and they hated it. They didn't appreciate the cheese to it. They didn't appreciate any of the, of the kitschy stuff. Yeah. They were like, why did we waste two hours watching this? Awful, awful movie. <laughs> so you won't be bringing them to see Independence Day Resurgence no, then? No, because I that's... learned that those kinds of movies don't go well with my parents. Or San Andreas 2. Yes. Why? Because the, the first one was the only, amazing. The, the only answer is money. Yeah, yeah it made uh, money. I get it. Man, I just... Eh, well, is it going to be a shared universe next? I'm sure. <laughs> see, so. For me, it was in high school when I dragged my friends to see a, a kid's movie called blank check i don't know if you guys ever remember yeah, this movie. Yeah, oh, yeah i do the only yeah. reason i wanted to see it is there a monkey in that movie no I, well i don't know maybe maybe he bought a monkey <laughs> okay the only reason i watched it because I, I had a huge crush on uh that uh vj the mtv vj duff she was in oh, dumb and right. dumber yeah she was one of the 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 two people that were chasing uh jim right. carrey and jeff daniels and that was like the first movie she was like a lead in. Yeah. And so Is that the little kid who gets a crap ton of money? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have so seen he, that. Yeah. So he gets a blank check and he like fills it out for like a million dollars and he gets it and he buys like a house. And I, I forgot. All, but I only wanted to see it because I thought uh, what's her face was hot. And so I dragged my fr high school friends there. It was all like kids, all <laughs> kids in there. It's like us, like three teenage guys there, like They're perving like, oh. out on whatever. What's her face? So I was like, oh, that's hilarious. So they, they afterwards they gave me some crap for it because they're like, that's so funny. Yeah. Like, okay. Oh, wow. All right. What's next? Ryan A. writes, just recently discovered the fantastic channel that is Collider. I've been addicted to all of your shows, Collider Movie Talk, TV Talk, Collider Heroes, etc. Love the Schmodown, too. Do you think with the rise of incredible TV series such as Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Mad Men, etc., is the movie industry borrowing from that and making more sequels and shared universes? Do you think that in five to ten years there will be fewer new independent pro properties excuse me, and more spin-off sequels and continuation of existing properties? Will the movie industry transform into a larger version of TV where movie series are planned years in advance and moviegoers spend most of their time anticipating them? I don't think it's a trend of borrowing from television. I think it's just more of a franchise thing. People want franchises because they can bank on repeat viewings of movies so if you're into an iron man then you know me you're more likely to go watch thor or avengers or civil war so i don't think it's a television thing it's a it's more of a brand name recognition thing i mean that's why they have an angry birds movie a lego movie it's all because they can sell it to the audience faster because they already know what the name of it is. Yeah. That's part of marketing. Like half your job is to get people to know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. And the other half to, is to make them want to actually go see it. So I, I think less of it being a TV thing, right? Mm. Yeah. And I think in the next five to 10 years, we're here, it's already happening. These, and I think they want to start with, like you said, Dennis, like a brand, like an angry birds. And then, if it makes enough money, I think they want to now get to the next big hot topic, which is a shared universe, so that you can prepare for your next movie that you're going to see in 2020. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's all these. We have the Universal Monster movies now happening, shared universe. They're now doing another shared universe with The Rock and Robert Ludlin. They're, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Angry Birds comes out and they're like, yeah, it's a shared universe with uh, the Tetris movie. I mean, you never know. They want these things. And um, I think if anything, maybe television is kind of borrowing a little bit by trying to do these serialized things, but that's always been mm -hmm. in television. And that's all, I mean, well, I don't know. Lost did a great job of like, you had to watch mm -hmm. every episode in order to get it. Um, now with this, it's like, God, ten to, five to 10 years. I, I'm sad to think that there might not be a lot of independent movies mm -hmm. in five to 10 years. That's for sure. I don't know, Sinead, what do you think? I mean, I think you're right. I think we are here. I think that is already happening. Yeah. Um, and the movies that are getting the most buzz are the movies that 
are three, four into the series. Like, absolutely. But that's also just because those movies are good. Like, Mm -hmm. that's just what it comes down to. Obviously, they struck gold when they decided to make an MCU. And why not continue to make those movies? Like, I don't think it's going to stop them, at least anytime soon, Mm -hmm. from making independent movies. Because there are some incredible independent movies that do get the recognition that they deserve. But yeah, we are in a time right now where this whole shared universe thing is all the rage, but we love it. Like that is just what it is. It works. We like it. And I get what you're saying. Like it's like TV. Absolutely. But that's also my favorite kind of TV is ones that at the end of the season, I'm like, oh man, this happened in the season finale, but in the first pilot, it was right there. Like yeah. I love stories that continue and I like seeing crossovers. That's the kind of stuff that gets me excited. Well, yeah. let me ask you guys then, do you think this this kind of strategy may backfire in the near future? Because I do know that some people who watch, let's say, let's say MCU movies, but they don't watch all of them. Right. Does it get to a point where you get so far along, like you're like, oh, well, I didn't see that one. Mm -hmm. So because my my I contest that I I love Captain America Civil War, but I feel like the two movies you had to see before that were Winter Soldier and Mm -hmm. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't get. Yeah. Everything that was happening in the more Civil so War. than anything else in the MCU. You're a hundred percent right. This yeah. is the first time where we actually did have to see that. So if that's the case, do we have an issue where maybe as we get further and further along, people are gonna be like, Well, I didn't see this one or that one and maybe it starts to fall off. Yeah. I, I think that's a good possibility of happening. I mean, I know you mentioned Age of Ultron Winter Soldier. My mom was lost when she went to Civil War. Uh-huh. But, and I'm like, but mom, you did see Winter Soldier. And this is just my mom. She doesn't remember movies sometimes. But she was like, well, what should, she was confused. So now I'm like, well, so are you going to see Avengers Age of Infinity? And she's like, huh? Yeah. I don't want to see another one. She was yeah. like, done. But that's for my mom. So for us, I think we're a bunch of geeks. We love that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it could be daunting to think in the next 10 years, maybe we're like, I don't know, 30, 40 movies into the Marvel. And you're like, you have to know Winter Soldier to get that one little bit or a plot point. I don't know. It's crazy to think. It might be, it might, sooner or later these things run their course, right? I mean, sooner or later we might not be seeing a shared universe. It might just kind of peter out and like Marvel might not do that well anymore and they might have to switch gears or maybe it's another kind of new thing. Original movies are coming back. We have more original spec screenplays that actually do better. It's hard to tell. Yeah, and speaking of television, he mentions Game of Thrones, and this is a yeah. series that I absolutely love, but I know both of you guys are not caught up on it. You guys, no. you've seen the first season. I think you've seen episodes here and there. Yeah. Isn't it, not that you guys don't want to see it, but it's you guys so know. It's so overwhelming. That's you, a you, great you, point. You, you know there's you know, 40, 50 episodes that you guys have to watch. I mean, I'm sure you guys, if you guys could be like, okay, let me flip that switch and okay, I've, I'm caught up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I got HBO Go a couple weeks ago and was like, I'm going to do this. Like, let's do this. I got so overwhelmed. And then I spoke to somebody later that day and they were like, oh, okay, well, if you have an entire year of your life, like, good luck. And that's literally how I feel. Like, I feel like I have to devote all of my time in order to even start watching the show. And it's so upsetting because everyone talks about it. And obviously on TV talk, it's like, all we talk about sometimes because it's such a great show and yeah it is daunting it is 100 percent daunting yeah and that's exactly why i'm not doing it i'm yeah, like same. i look at i got behind i watched season one and then i just a lot of things were going on in my life personally by the time i caught up with everything i'm like oh my god it's season three. Oh, and i couldn't even catch up then now everybody's like i can't believe riley you're not watching game of thrones this is your type of show which right. it is it is my bread and butter and i'm like I look at that list of episodes and I'm like, oh my God, mm-hmm. you mean I have to, I have to put away hours to, to catch up right. and that's, I just don't have time on my schedule right now. Yeah. Well, having said that, you both should, Yeah, <laughs> I know. but I will, I will yeah. Yeah. sooner or later. It's that good. I all know. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. What's next? Cody Spencer writes, hey, Collider crew, love you all. My question is regarding the Disney live action movies. Since they have already done Cinderella in live action and they are doing Beauty and the Beast, plus other Disney princess movies, I think inevitably they will do a live action version of all the movies with Disney princesses. So my my question is, when and if this happens, do you think they will do a combined movie with all of them, like a shared universe of princess Avengers? I think, yes, thanks. (laughs) While I like this idea, I think it suits 
more towards like an animated movie. I could see that happening, having the princesses assemble like the Avengers in that. Live action is a little tougher. Mm -hmm. Also, just they're all from like different time periods say, and locations. Yeah. And, and how are you going to play that off realistically? That's why with the animated, I think you can get away with it more. Sure. Right? Well, the first thing that came to my mind was the movie Magic Kingdom that's in development with Jon Favreau as a director where all the Disney rides come to life. And for some reason, that sounds just bonkers. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. So there's a part of me that's like, Disney being like, if they're, everything was so successful, like maybe not because I know t different time frames, so you can have Belle and like maybe Ariel, but could you? I, I, I don't, I, I mean, I've, there's a Tetris movie coming. Yes. True. So anything is, it can happen. I think that this could happen. And I gotta say, when I saw Princess Avengers, I was like, man, that's kind of like, would Belle, like she's with the beast and she runs into Ariel somehow. And there, there's like an evil sorcerer that, is like going to enslave the world and it's like all of a sudden i mean i could see it happening i really could really? see it happening yeah all right Sinead, can you see this happening um i do i think that if they were to just ignore the fact that there is so many countries involved here sure and so many time periods and they just make it a new fresh story and they just treat it as if they all are from the same universe or whatever same timeline period this could be something amazing i would want to see this with kind of a sexy vibe to it mm. because I think, I don't know if Disney would ever do something like that, but I, I think the idea of a bunch of princesses being so like hot and kick ass and all together would work in a way that's more mature. I don't know if Disney would ever do that, but yeah, I wouldn't want to see this in an animated film. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Well, and we also have the Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland movie happening. Oh yeah, that's the that shared was, universe. It was uh, just announced that actually Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland are brother and sister. Yeah. And it's like, so it's it's happening. Yeah. It's, Every, everything's so they combining. can make up stories you know, whatever I mean, they it, want. Yeah. Everything's combining. That's that's basically the point of this show. Is yeah. everything is combining and everything will, you know, yeah. fit fit together. Exactly. <laughs> All right, what's next? Haley Skinner writes, Hi Clyder crew. I've been watching the show for a while now and I always watch when I'm away from home for a long period of time. And it makes me a little less homesick. This got me thinking about films that always make you miss home. For me, being Scottish, it's Braveheart. It has motion, humor, and drama, and never fails to make me think about home. What are the films that you watch when you're away from home that bring a smile to your face or simply make you miss it? Thanks. For me, it's not about the actual film and what's in it. It's about my memories of when I saw the film and who I saw it with. So yeah. for me, it's... a. Uh, Clue, nice, Big, and Goonies, because those are movies that I watched as a child with with my family, my cousins, my sister, my parents, and those those bring me back to the you know childhood days. Yeah, yeah, I have uh, Jaws. Like we would watch Jaws at my grandmother's house where she's on she's on the beach. Oh, so you and your family didn't actually go on a boat and get chased down by a, a giant shark. Well, right? later on in life okay. we did, but uh no, yeah, we we would watch Jaws and then it was it was weird because it really stunted my growth as a child. <laughs> we would then go to the beach and I'd be like, "We just watched Jaws." I'm not I remember kicking and screaming because there was barnacles on the side of the pier and I thought that was Jaws. So, well done, <laughs> dad, for putting that on that day. But that reminds me of home um Empire Strikes Back. Every time I watch Empire Strikes Back, I remember when my family and I were um, visiting some relatives back east, and we went and saw it. So that that that's you're right, Dennis. It ties to these memories of like where I was or who I was with, not necessarily like the landscape. But Jaws seems to always stick out. Maybe the beach kind of thing. So what about you, Sinead? Um, well, I grew up in South Africa, and I always think about like the classic Disney movies because that was the ones that our entire family would get together, all the cousins would get together and watch. Um, yeah. For me, it would be like Lion King, uh, Toy Story, nice. those ones. The Lion King especially, I feel like that's the first movie I truly remember as well. Um, and Titanic, as weird okay. as it sounds. But I saw Titanic when I was like four or five years old. Because um, oh it was in the God. theaters and it was super exciting. So we went and um, I, we, I went to watch it with my whole family. So Titanic definitely takes me home. 
Um, but growing up in South Africa, side note, I remember one time being at the beach and we all had to get out of the water because there were great whites. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Everyone, they were like, oh, come on, out of the yeah. water. The great whites, they're back. Just come on, just come on. And we're all like just prancing like, oh, yeah. those damn sharks again. Oh my God. So not Blood Diamond. Blood, blood Diamond doesn't. <laughs> know, right? Blood Diamond, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. No. Yeah. no. All, right. all right. What's next? Mojo Blaster writes, do you think the upcoming Halloween with Carpenter back at the helm could continue the tradition that Carpenter wanted to do back with the original, meaning that each Halloween movie would feature a different story on Halloween night and not necessarily feature Michael Myers? That's one of the reasons I love Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. It's a different Halloween tale that doesn't feature Michael Myers. Your thoughts? Uh, I don't think they're going to go away from Michael Myers. And if I'm not mistaken, John Carpenter isn't directing. He's just producing the film. Right. Uh, yeah, he's too iconic in that role. Uh, I just don't see how why they would go away from him. Riley? Yeah, I think now the title Halloween is synonymous with Michael Myers. And so it's going to be really hard. They're, and it's a brand. I mean, you look, they're, now they're trying to reinvigorate the franchise by getting rid of all that other reboot nonsense and the continuation that the Saw uh, writers were going to do. They're bringing back Carpenter. He's going to score it, which is okay. going to be amazing. I can't wait for that. Um, and he's going to be a producer, but Michael Myers is just too powerful of a brand to get away from Halloween. And they already tried to do an anthology with Trick or Treat, which I love. I love that Trick or Treat movie. Um, so I would love to see it. I wish that Hollywood had the balls to do an anthology of movies under the Halloween title. I love Season of the Witch. It is so 80s cheesy good. Um, melting mask, kids, weird music. I love it. But it, at the time, pissed off the fans. They wanted Michael Myers back. So mm -hmm. that's why he came back in part four. So I don't know. I just think that the brand is way too powerful to, to do, to try to risk an anthology of movies. Like if this one is successful with Carpenter back, they're going to they're going to do Halloween, whatever it is with Michael Myers back again. So I hope I they go with like more of that slasher, the tension filled versus the, that, that those remake or reboots that Rob Zombie did. They were just sla they were a gore fest. You right. know? Oh God, he didn't get it. Slasher, like, yeah. Hardcore. Like I, I didn't care for those. Yeah. Uh, Sinead, are you looking forward to a Halloween? Yeah. And reboot? I think that fans of the franchise should be super excited that John Carpenter is back. Like, oh yeah. This, this could be what this franchise needs to really reboot itself. But you're saying you're what, what you're saying is right. Excuse me. If you're going to reinvigorate this, you need Michael Myers. Like yeah. if you want to get people hooked back in it, you need Michael Myers. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if they did the marketing or trailer and there's no Michael Myers. No. They're like, okay, what am I? Why is this Halloween? Exactly. Yeah. yeah they'd be confused. They yeah. need that. So. All right. What's next? Kimuzabi writes, if Paul Feig's Ghostbusters reboot kicks off a new Ghostbusters multiverse, do you think we could still get a third installment with the original Ghostbusters passing the torch to a new team? Or would that be too confusing for general audiences? If so, I would pay tribute to Harold Ramis by including a character that is like him, or maybe that would play his son, Bill Hader, to take his place as the brains in the original team. I would put Bill I would put Bill Murray as a political figure or a mayor role and keep Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson as the last two surviving members of the team. What would you like to see in a possible Ghostbusters 3 and who would you cast as the new team? Mine would be Diego Luna, Bill Hader, Kristen Ritter, and Michael B. Jordan. Hmm. Um, if they do have the original team, they definitely... I would want them to be kind of a smaller role that the, they are passing the torch. I don't want it to be where they're the main focus and then maybe there's some new people. In terms of a new team, I, I wrote down Seth Rogen, Bill Hader is a good one, Sam Rockwell, and John Cho, because I don't nice. know if you've seen the hashtag starring John, John Cho, where they're, pu <laughs> they're putting his face on all these movie posters as, oh, as really? the leading role. Yeah, That's awesome. Um, I, I think... For Ghostbusters three, I think sadly that ship has sailed. Yeah. I don't think they're the. It might. It's probably going to be too confusing. They. This is a reboot with Melissa McCarthy yeah. and Kristen Wiig and Paul Feig uh, directing, so that ship has sailed. The the one thing I can see happening is the spin off that they want to do the shared universe with Channing Tatum, and Chris Pratt. Mm -hmm. That was kind of announced, kind of fell apart. Russo brothers were in talks to maybe do it. They moved on, so I can see that happening. If this is a, a success, it will be. Maybe Channing Tatum and Chris Pratt. And um, I don't know. I'd love to see Michael B. Jordan. That'd be really great. Um, but yeah, they, I, think, I think they'd only be bringing in the original Ghostbusters for cameos like they're doing with this next one. 
which is still confusing to me because I, I still was wondering if this is actually a reboot or a sequel, but now I know it's a reboot. I'm a little sad that we didn't get a Passing the Torch movie. That would have been great. Um, although, when he says, kind of puts it in the multiverse, wouldn't it be great if they opened up a portal and then the regular Ghostbusters came in? That'd be, a, I'd watch that. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that, could, that could work because it's ghosts and, and weirdness. Right? I think this is contingent on how well this rebooted. I was just going to say, Absolutely. like, Ghostbusters. We, yeah. we need to remember that so far what we've seen of Ghostbusters doesn't look so good. So yeah. maybe no. we should wait a little bit and yeah. see yeah. how this pans out. And not announce five, six, <laughs> six. seven <laughs> sequels. Gonna, can't wait for Power yeah. Rangers, man. 2030, let, 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 it's let, really going to be... That, let's get that first one out of the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry. All right, what's next? Timothy Mulder writes, hey, Collider Crew, I've just got a short question. Are movies art? Some movies are considered artfully directed. Some are praised for their beautiful cinematography, and independent films often are called art house films. And although movie making is often described as a business and a majority of the movies are made for commercial reasons, they are also a clear form of creative expression. Movies like Citizen Kane, The Godfather, Seven Samurai, Empire Strikes Back, Schindler's List, and Lawrence of Arabia, to name a few, are regarded as masterpieces, yet don't seem to be recognized on the same level as the greatest works of art. We have Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, Michelangelo's David, Beethoven's Fifth Sym Symphony, and William Shakespeare's Hamlet. But is there room for a Coppola's Godfather or Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey? I would love to hear what you guys think and maybe what movies you consider to be works of art. Thanks and a big sweaty salute to you all from the Netherlands. Hmm. Well, I'm definitely in the camp of that movies can be art. That doesn't mean every movie is a piece of art, but <laughs> right. then again, every painting is not a piece of art. Um, I, I feel like some of the ones he named, Lawrence of Arabia, Godfather, Goodfellas, Seven Samurai, Clockwork Orange, I think those are those are masterpieces and, and pieces of art. And, and you have to understand, most movies nowadays are kind of like some art, some commerce, we don't know, for business as well. It's, it's a mix of these two things, but yeah. there's definitely things that come out. You have to also remember, back in the day, a lot of these paintings were commissioned by wealthy individuals. Does That's that make point. them art? I still think they are. Yeah. And also, you know, I'm not a big fan of a lot of this modern art crap that comes out. <laughs> it's just yeah. some of it's just ridiculous. There's just been a recent thing. I think it went viral where up in San Jose, uh, th these guys like pranked people. They went to a modern art museum and they put glasses on the ground and they put a little description. Yeah, and then, I saw that. And people are like taking pictures of, of it like it's art, you know? It's just like ridiculous. And <laughs> I, I just feel like if people think like stuff like that's art, why can't movies be art? Yeah. Riley? I, I come from uh, the opinion that they are art, yeah. that, that, you know, you kind of, you're motivated to do the same thing. You're telling a story, whether it's on the canvas or through the lens of a camera. So it's definitely art. Some of them don't like the Garbage Pails movie, Garbage Pail Kid movie, not art. That, mm -hmm. that was shit. But there are people like Seven Samurai, um, 2001. These can be regarded for me. They are masterpieces. And I think history will tell in time, like years from now, we will look back and maybe the best movies like Lawrence of Arabia, I think will stand the test of time. 2001 will stand the test of time. These are the movies that our grandkids, my grandkids' grandkids will talk about as art back in the day. Remember that one, just like the Mona Lisa. So I, I and it's all about your definition. Yeah, you know, so that's my opinion. Shanine? Um, I come from the opinion that all movies are art. Mm -hmm. All movies are art. Even all the TV crappy shows, ones. Even the crappy okay. ones. Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah. Yes, everything. Okay, um, I, I believe all TV shows are art. I believe all songs are art. That's just that's my opinion. It doesn't yeah. mean that it's good art, like you said. Um, but I do. That's how I've always regarded it. It's something creative. It's artful. Yeah, absolutely. I Every love, single movie. And I love that. Yeah, something creative because that's that really speaks to me. So yeah, I would I would totally agree with you that even every movie now because somebody went into it and had to be creative even the garbage bell kids movie yeah. have to do something creative to get that thing up there That's even great. fantastic four you guys yeah even. even fantastic four so even to to rail on uh, some modern art stuff some more yeah, please did do. you guys watch the documentary ba the banksy documentary exit through the gift shop no, no. i need to see that okay I know. what's interesting about that is if you watch it at least my perspective of it it kind of pokes fun at the fact that people now are regarding the street art as high art now mm, and how interesting how, how people are selling these right. items because in, in it they they have this other guy come up and they kind of 
they, they portray him as kind of like a like I don't know, kind of like a doofus. Hmm. But he's like making this art, and suddenly because other people are talking about how good the art is, and then suddenly he becomes like this this artist of note, and and he's selling his pieces for a lot of money. Uh, it's a very interesting documentary because when I watch it, at some points I feel like is this a documentary or maybe it's a mockumentary that Banksy purposely set up to kind of point out, Hey, all this stuff is BS. Like all this, like, cause they're selling like anything that he does. And then people are like, Oh, is that a Banksy or is that not a right, Banksy? Right. Right. He does. I don't know if you know recently, uh, like last year he went into, I think he went to central park and he had like, he was selling like his own like paintings to people mm. for, you know, like 20 bucks or whatever. And uh -huh. some people would buy them, some wouldn't buy them. And then later when it, they found out it was Banksy, they're like, oh, now this is worth thousands right. of dollars. It's like, well, before when you didn't know it was him, no one was buying these things. And people are like, oh, this looks like something they just, you know, buy for 20 bucks and put in their in their living room. Yeah. So, Jeez. Yeah. So that's my additional <laughs> insulting modern art. <laughs> I like it. Yes. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Collider Mailbag. I want to thank the people joining me at the table today. Sinead, where can people find you? I'm online at Sinead DeFries, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. I'm everywhere online. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Movie Talk on Fridays, um, hosting TV Talk on Mondays, this coming Monday, which is tomorrow. Um, we don't have a show because it's Memorial Day weekend. Woo! So we have one on Tuesday. And then you can guys you guys can find me on Mailbag over the weekends. Riley? Uh, you can find me at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. You'll see me pop up on Collider video shows every once in a while. Defending my belt for the Schmodown soon. We're waiting for a new match. We're waiting for Dan Merle's schedule to match up with mine. And then uh, you can see me every Thursday on the Schmo's No, uh, Schmo's no main show. And you can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram, Dennis.TZENG. You'll find me on Movie Talk, usually Mondays and Fridays, the weekend mailbags. And I'll pop up on some spoilers, non spoilers, and other videos. Sometimes on TV Talk, once in a while. I haven't been on for, for a bit. Yeah. My schedule's been a little, little busy, also being sick. What are you help. doing? Yeah, I know. I know. No, we don't have a lot going on here exactly. at all. You have time, dude. Yeah, Come exactly. <laughs> Priorities, Dennis. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, remember, no show tomorrow for Movie Talk, Memorial Day, but we will see you guys on Tuesday. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.